various media sources, including Dan Rayfield of ESPN, are reporting that Deontay Wilder's next defense of his WBC heavyweight title is set for July 16th in Birmingham, Alabama, and it will be against Chris Ariola. Now, I had mentioned in previous videos that Ariola was one of, if not the, front runner to get this fight. Obviously, Wilder has been granted this voluntary defense of his title because of the situation with Alexander Povetkin having failed a drug test. So while they sort all that out, they're allowing him to defend his title in a voluntary. Now, I have an issue with this fight, and I've said this before. My main issue is Chris Ariola is not ranked in the top 15 of the WBC. And as you can see on screen, Chris Ariola is not even in the top 40 of the WBC, as a matter of fact. And he's actually, they actually mention him in the, uh, on the WBC website below the heavyweight rankings. And there's some asterisk next to his name and it says legal, as if there's some type of legal reason as to why they don't have him in the top 15 or even the top 40 of their rankings. So I'd be interested to find out what that legal situation is. Is it something to do with the Travis Kaufman fight? Because obviously uh, Travis Kaufman, I believe, tested positive for some type of uh, so hang on, was it was it Kaufman or was it Ariola that tested positive for some type of substance after the fight? I think it might have been Ariola. I think it was a Ari. Did Ariola test positive for weed? <laughs> I can't, I can't remember. That might be what it is. You know, it might be Ariola tested positive for weed. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so come to think of it, that might be why he's not in the the. Uh, the WBC <laughs> rankings at the moment. Either way, I don't like the fact that he's being picked when he's not ranked in the top 15. The WBC normally only allow voluntary defenses to be fighters who are in the top 10. And in this case with Wilder, they said they'll extend it to the top 15 to make it a little bit easier. They're trying to appease him because of this Povetkin situation. But I think they're going a bit too far with this, to be honest. And we all know what this is. This is an in-house Al Heyman fight. And, you know, again, props to Al Heyman for the good that he's done in boxing. But certain times he does some BS. And this is some BS right here. He wants an in-house fight that's going to generate maximum revenue. And he knows that Chris Ariola still has a bigger fan base than most of these other American heavyweights. And certainly a bigger fan base than most of the heavyweights that Al Heyman has on his books. So that's what he's looking at. He's looking at Wilder, who has a fan base, who has the next biggest fan base out of the Heyman heavyweights, uh, probably Ariola. So let me pick him, do it in-house in Birmingham, Alabama, and it is what it is. I'm sure you'll probably get a lot of Mexicans turning up to that fight. So, yes, a cynical exercise in marketing. Now, some people actually like the fight and they say it will probably be entertaining. Maybe it will be entertaining. You know, I'm not sitting here telling you that I mean, it depends on what you find entertaining, but there'll be big punches thrown by both sides. How long it lasts, I don't know. But, uh, you know, it may be entertaining. I just prefer to see sanctioning bodies stick to their rules. If you've got rules in place, don't chop and change them and make them up as you go along. Stick to them. And here we have the WBC seemingly... I know it's exceptional circumstances with a failed drug test. He was supposed to be fighting a mandatory challenger, etc. But still, there has to be some type of provision. There ha must be provisions in their rules for this type of stuff. Maybe I should go read their rules, actually. Look at me being ignorant. Maybe I should read their rules, but uh, I don't know. Ariola has seen better days. What's Ariola's best win in his career? Travis Walker? Is that his best win? I mean, I, I'm not sure why Ariola is as well known as he is. I know he comes and always gives 100% every time in the ring. It's a shame he don't give 100% in the gym. Uh, he, most of the time he seems to be sprawled out on a couch somewhere with his hand in a bag of Dorito chips and the other hand in <laughs> you know, a bucket of KFC with a spliff in his mouth. <laughs> Watching reruns of Colombo. That's how... I imagine Chris Ariola to be most of the time. 
So, uh, yeah, you know, he's seen better days. I think there's far more deserving challenges to get a, a, a voluntary shot at Wilder's title. So I am disappointed in that sense. From, like I say, from a credibility standpoint, I'm disappointed because there are many, many fighters who have worked hard to try and get into the the upper echelons of the rankings of all the governing bodies, including the WBC. So to see a guy like Ariola picked, who's not even currently ranked in the top 40, those guys must be thinking, nah, man, this is some BS. Look how many tough fights I've had to try and get up in the rankings. And they're going to go pick Ariola, a guy who's been struggling with journeyman lately. And he really has. Let me know what you think about this fight, people. Drop it all in the comment section below. Personally, as I said, I think it's some Heyman BS. And, uh, you know, Wilder has to take some blame for this as well. I know he's he wa he did want to fight Povetkin. He was going to fight Povetkin. But still, for a voluntary defense, you know, maybe it's a situation where they're thinking, why take any risks? Because we might still have to fight Povetkin. So let's at least make some money. We might not even, we might have two fights with Povetkin. We might have the physical fight in the ring or we might have the legal fight outside the ring. And if we have the legal fight outside the ring, that's going to require money. So we're going to need to make as much money from this voluntary defense as we can. And Ariola is the best way to make as much money as possible. Maybe that's what they're thinking. I don't know. Either way, as a, from a boxing fan's perspective, I don't particularly like it, you know, the fight itself. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. It's your boy Hatman, I'm out.